Hello everyone, let's take a look at this 9-year-old patient that presented to our clinic for orthodontic treatment. So keep in mind this patient is 9 years of age. Again, let's like recognize what teeth have erupted so far. So maxillary and mandibular first molars are erupted, mandibular incisors are erupted, canines are in the process of erupting. Um, and let's look over to the maxilla. Central incisors are erupted. Number 7 erupted. Now let's take a look at number 10. How do you assess? What do you like or don't like about the angulation of the lateral incisor? I think you can see that it failed to erupt all the way and that's partly because the, the crown is positioned right above in this case right above the the um, crown of primary canine so it is able unable to erupt all the way but you wonder why this tooth is angulated as such and then you look at the canine okay that is uh, appears to be at least at this stage that appears to have caused the potentially the displacement of the lateral incisor let's compare that to the other side canine is appropriately positioned directly superior to the primary canine letter C but that is unfortunately not the case and if you look over to the right we have two premolars that are superimposed with each other on, on this radiograph suggesting that there's significant uh, crowding in this area. So we have a lot going on right now, crowding and the canine that potentially uh, is likely impacted and have caused this um, potential displacement of the lateral incisor which would um, which prevented the lateral incisor to fully erupt and like the case that I just shared with you earlier this could certainly cause resorption of the lateral incisor down the road so that is something we have to watch out for another area that this uh, that we need to pay close attention to is this region and this, the reason actually this radiograph was referred to me was to evaluate uh, this particular area for, uh, for ruling out pathology, including any other you know, odontogenic uh, tumors or cysts along with uh, extra follicle or supernumerary tooth in this region. So what do you guys think? take a moment to look at this region and make up your mind as to whether this is most likely a normal anatomic features or uh, this is a, a definitively a abnormal area or are you somewhere in between so I want you to make up your mind before I uh, dive into this together as a group okay so now I'd like to kind of address some other structures that's important to recognize which is going to help us determine what this is, right? Okay, so first anatomic feature that I want to uh, address is this a border, okay? The contrast between this radiolucent area and radioopaque opacity creates this sharp border that you can trace all the way over to the contralateral side okay so what could this border be above this border we see a thin band of radiolucency and above that band of radiolucency we see yet another radio opaque border this is the border of the tongue and then the band of radiolucency represents the um, 
airway between the tongue and this superior structure. So now let's answer what the superior structure is. Given the location and also the uh, radiographic appearance, it has that bony architecture to it. So that's the heart palate. And you're seeing ghost image of the heart palate as well. But what about this structure? This doesn't have that uh, bony, trabeculated, cortical bone appearance, but rather it has a homogeneous, smooth uh, radio opacity bilaterally, right? So that is, what do you think? Guess right now. And that actually represents soft palate. Let me see if I can zoom in on this. Okay, great, great. So we see soft palate, and part of the reason why this appears like a uh, follicle potentially is that we s our eyes catch this opaque corticated appearance, right? So the question is, what is that appearance? What is that corticated line? It actually is a continuation well, I need to zoom out just a little bit, is a continuation of mandibular canal. Keep in mind this patient is young. Uh, what did I say? I think the patient was seven, did I say seven or eight years of age? Uh, so young, so corrication is not uh, pronounced, but that's the beginning of the mandibular canal. And if we look contralateral side, okay, I'm gonna have to zoom out one more time, uh, we can see the border of the mandibular canal cortication. So that's what we're looking at um, compared to this other side, contralateral side. This area is ra very radiolucent to begin with, right? So we have radiolucent area combined with opaque border of the soft tissue. So do you see uh, where I'm going at with this? So what I'm suggesting is that our eyes will you know, have a tendency to draw something based on the structures that we see. So in short, I think this most likely represents a normal anatomy okay, with uh, different structures that may create an, a false appearance of a lesion. That's what I think it is, what it is instead of a true lesion. However, having said that, we have a benefit of getting additional panoramic radiograph as the patient undergoes uh, you know, the continued orthodontic treatment. This patient will probably get middle of the treatment panoramic radiograph uh, eventually, maybe, I, I don't know, like six to eight months or 10 months down the road. So this gives us a, a, an opportunity for us to better evaluate or reevaluate that area. So by reevaluating, we'll be able to perhaps better discern of, of what this is but at this point, I'm leaning toward uh, normal anatomy rather than a true assist or tumoral lesion. So that's my assessment for this panoramic radiograph. I hope um, you were able to, you know, pick up, s you know, some some things how I, you know, my uh, things uh, and tips on how I interpret panoramic radiograph. Uh, I've briefly addressed the eruption pathway or eruption status of the tooth and some anatomic structures. Those are all uh, features that you want to definitely consider when you're evaluating panoramic radiograph. My mentors have always said that panoramic radiograph is one of the most difficult image to interpret and I, the, uh, that I complete, completely agree with them. So uh, how do you become good at interpreting panel? Well, you have to look at more examples, you have to look at more panoramic radiograph. The more you do it, the more you watch my video and follow uh, what I'm seeing, it will help you to get to that level you, where you want, it, you want yourself to be at, okay? Well, thank you again for your attention. You have a great rest of the day. Bye.